Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at some shocking venomous snake TikToks, and as usual, I'm hoping to hear what you think about these in the comments. Let's dive in. El lechero, sigo en bordeo. Y casi asistimos a un accidente en directo. Ahorita a ver qué tal el pueblo de la leche con una king cobra. Eso fue cerca. Con su veneno mortal puede entubar un elefante. Pero solamente si entra en contacto con tu sangre. Qué rico su veneno. Man, there's so much in that one, I don't even know where to start. I mean, aside from the fact they're tormenting a cobra, they've also made him bite a cup to show some venom or whatever. Like we saw in my last video, someone did the same thing. So these silly practices that are kind of abusive towards the animals are kind of spreading. They're, they're becoming a trend now. So I just got bit by a poisonous snake in Korea. Fingers swelling up quick. Uh, I got an ambulance on the way, so we're gonna find out uh, what the situation is and I'll give you an update. So this is a guy who got bit by a pit viper in Korea and as you can see, he's pretty chilled out about it. Alright guys, here's the update. They gave me some anti-venom. said I'm lucky because it only bit me with one fang and uh, I got here super quick, so... I should be all right. Well, hey, check this out. Pretty good on the backside. Looking good. But here's the bad spot. Doctor said, um, just got to give him more time and uh, keep it mobile. So I'll give you guys an update soon. I'm pretty sure the viper that bit him, um, I think he said it was a red-tongued viper, so that's kind of distantly related to cottonmouths and copperheads, and their venom would be like mostly hemotoxic. But overall, I think that's quite interesting because he did exactly the right thing. He's not a reptile enthusiast or anything like that, but he did the right thing. He, he got help, he went to hospital, uh, he got help as fast as he could, and he got antivenom. But even so, it just shows that even if you get antivenom, you can still have tissue damage, you could still potentially lose a finger. It's really never a good thing when you get bitten by a venomous snake. In the movies, it kind of makes it seem like you can get antivenom and you'll be okay, but in real life, there, there's always gray areas. For those of us that choose to work with venomous snakes, it's just nature of the job that there will be risk. Obviously, this video shows a venom extraction goes very, very wrong. I'm pretty sure that was Bothrops asper, which is one of the species that people commonly call the fer de lance, but there are, you know, about three or more species that people use that common name for. Anyway, that's a really nasty bite. Personally, I think if more of the snake had have been out of the tube, the guy could have got more of his hand on it to restrain it, and it wouldn't have been able to use that kind of strength that they have, that special mechanical strength that snakes have. Obviously, he had some body in the tube, he was able to, to use that to kind of winch his head over and get the guy. And really, it doesn't surprise me that much. I mean, there's always risk when you, when you handle venomous snakes, or any animal that can do you damage, really. But snakes, they've got this special kind of unique mechanical strength. We're often told, incorrectly, that they have thicker muscle fibers, that their muscle is stronger, pound per pound. Um, than mammals, for example, and it, it's not really true. Their muscles don't perform better under tests. But what is true is that all their muscles are short, their ribs are close together, their vertebrae are numerous. So all of their muscles are short and they're always close to full contraction. And that gives them a shed load of strength. And they can give you surprising little twists and bursts of strength like that. It's the same phenomena too. If you take your arm and your arm's straight like this and you try and lift it, it's quite hard if you apply you know, enough pressure. But if you have your arm close to full contraction or your biceps close to full contraction, that's when you've got the most strength. And they're like that all the time. That was Fang Peep. That guy seems like a nice guy. Seems like he takes care of his animals. But man, the risks he takes are not for me. That's definitely another good defense mechanism. I think that probably scares me off more than the bite in some cases. Let's got beaten by a snake. My own mistake. 
uh, call to 112 to come, but always summer hot day. I had to move the ground with the stick before I walked there, but I didn't. Just one time I was lazy. Damn it! That guy was pretty cool. You know, he's gotten angry with himself instead of getting angry with the snakes. There's no point getting angry with the snake because it's a snake. You know, if you sit on it or disturb it or put your hand on it by accident, it's, it's going to bite because it thinks it might get squashed. Uh, he was actually in Finland, so they've got the common European adder that we get here in the UK. It would be an extremely painful bite, but generally not life-threatening. You know, it's kind of two, three days of, of intense pain, really. But overall, I just think he had a good attitude, you know, he's not gone and tried to kill the snake or anything, he's just called an ambulance and got himself sorted out. This is a video that one of my subscribers, Tom, sent to me over Instagram. Thank you, Tom. And it shows a person with advanced multiple sclerosis getting bitten, or administered venom, I guess. And this is kind of a folk remedy. There is some scientific thinking behind it, which people use to explain, you know, hoping to stimulate the immune system in a healthy way. It's not something I would recommend myself because there's no proof as such that it really helps and it could be very very dangerous but I'm not really willing to kind of look down my nose at folk remedies because we just don't know all of the elements in snake venom. I just bought a new pair of rare Halloween vipers in there in this crate that I just picked up from the airport. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's lift it up and take a closer look. This is our male Taylor's Cantil. These are a rare and beautiful viper species from Mexico. They are close relatives to our copperheads and cottonmouths here in America, but obviously they are much more beautiful. Taylor's Cantil is a very beautiful snake. Personally, I'm not sure if I can consider it more beautiful than a copperhead, because copperheads are just one of my favorite patterns on any animal, I think. There's another weird video that came to my inbox. I don't know, maybe that was an albino western diamondback rattlesnake. I'd love to get some context behind this video, if it is someone, you know, self-immunizing like a lot of people are trying to do now. Um, or is it just someone with a death wish? Let me know. By the way, if there is anything you want me to comment on, there's an email for the channel now. I'll link it in the bio. Now, to me, that was amazing. He's gone and got the snake, it looked like a Cape Cobra. He's picked it up, he's been slow about his movements, he's taking pauses, he's respecting his distances, and he's judging, you know, the kind of mood the snake's in. He calmly maneuvers it, presents it with a dark hiding place, and it goes in. There's no fuss, there's no stress to the snake, there's no stress to the people there, there's no danger or anything, no dramatics, you know. If that had been one of the guys we see on TV, they'd have been doing all these movements, holding the snake up, getting it to hood up and strike at the camera probably and all that crap, which isn't necessary at all. If you care about the animal, if you like the animals, just do it safely. These snakes are dangerous. I'm a professional and this is my job, finding wild snakes in the wilderness to introduce them to you. A beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. And then we see a professional. <laughs> I'll tell you a little secret now about how to become a professional snake handler. The way you become a professional, like on TV, is you look at the camera and you say, I'm a professional. This is a king cobra standing tall and standing proud next to a measuring tape. 
For being 11 feet long, he can stand nearly 4 feet tall. An adult King Cobra can look a grown man in the eyes. This is interesting, because I'd love to see how big the tallest King Cobra has ever been. I know it's a bit of a ridiculous question. I've heard the longest King Cobra was over 18 feet, so I'd love to see one that big actually rise up. But honestly, I don't know if they get that big in the wild anymore, or if there's even any in captivity that big. This is a boom slang. They are from Africa. They have a venom that's unlike most other snakes. It will make you bleed out of every orifice, and I mean every. And this was herpetologist Carl Schmidt. And he unwittingly got bitten by one when he was studying them in Chicago. And instead of getting help, well, he documented his snake bite death. I get a different version of that story every single time, so I'm just going to tell you the version I heard when I was a kid. If it's wrong, correct me in the comments. I heard someone sent him a snake um, in a box. He didn't know where the snake was from or what it was, and they told him a, a different location or something, so he really wasn't expecting a boom slang. And when he opened the box, it sprang out and bit him. And he knew there was no anti-venom in the country, that there was zero chance of doing anything for that venom. So he thought the best thing to do was document the effects on him until he died, basically. That was a melanistic timber rattlesnake, which is a very cool animal to see. They're kind of impressive when they're that dark in colour. If you're an American, you should know why this snake is iconic for your culture, hopefully, um, because it's a pretty, pretty big one. But melanism in reptiles is quite interesting. Often in captivity, we see ones which have melanism through what we call Mendelian genetics or Mendelian inheritance, whereby one snake is all black and 50% of its babies turn out the same color. In the wild, especially with timber rattlesnakes, it tends to be a bit different. It's adaptive and regulatory, so in areas where they enter more montane habitat or cooler regions, like in Pennsylvania and places like that, they tend to evolve to gradually become darker and darker and darker and almost completely black in some areas. So it seems to be polygenic, regulated by several genes, and we think it's probably genes that are regulatory themselves being altered, so genes that would normally suppress the overproduction of melanin, those genes being suppressed and just allowing it to, to carry on. Day... Day 79 of an unknown animal per day till I get famous. Ateris hispida is a venomous viper native to Central Africa. For their extremely keeled dorsal scales, they are often called rough scale bush viper or spiny bush viper. They are venomous and potentially life threatening as there is no existing commercially available anti venom. Love of bush vipers, they're a very beautiful group of species. They're incredible to look at, but for the venom, I really don't know how, how dangerous or life threatening it is. I don't know if anyone really knows a lot about their venom, if there's been a conclusive, well, an exhaustive study done on it. All right, so here we've got a call out for a lovely big Siamese spitting cobra, which has killed a frog and unfortunately, unfortunately there's no saving this frog. All right. Got it. To be safely released somewhere else. He's doing a good deed there, but some seriously risky handling. I, I do wonder if it's necessary or if some of us just feel the need to take risks, whether we enjoy taking risks, perhaps.
That was pretty cool. I've seen a few of this guy's videos now. He basically just goes and gets all of the sea snakes out of the net, takes them back into the ocean. He's taking a small risk. I mean, they are highly venomous, but they're not aggressive and they're not great at really moving, coordinating on land. Um, but still, still a risk all the same. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been shocking in parts, but we've seen some pretty smart people too. So let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you soon.